name in all the earth. The Lord's name, he's given us a name above all names, and at the night sound of Jesus, every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess. When demons hear the name of Jesus, they tremble and they run away. We have been given a name with so much power that regardless of what we're going through, whenever when, when we can't even come up with the words to say, we can just call on the name of Jesus and he will come right in the midst of our situation. Can you call on him this morning? Just call on him. Just call on the name of Jesus. Just call him till he comes in your midst, wherever you are. Just call on the name of Jesus this morning. There's power in that name. That is the only name by which anybody can be saved. The name of Jesus is the greatest asset that we have been given by God. Just take a moment. Take a moment to think on that name, Jesus. Call on it. There's so much power in that name. Regardless of what you struggle with, when times get hard and you can't see your way, call on Jesus. When you need to make a decision and you don't know what to do, call on Jesus. When you have pain in your body, call on Jesus. A wayward child, call on the name of Jesus. A troubled marriage, call on the name of Jesus. There's nothing too hard for him and nothing's impossible for him. So if you don't know a scripture, if you don't know what to say, just say the name Jesus. Oh, Heavenly Father, we come this morning, God, and we say thank you, Lord God. We thank you for another day and another opportunity to come out and worship you and gather together in your name, oh, Father God. We just thank you for that, oh, Lord God. Now, God, we come opening up our hearts this morning. We come opening up our minds, oh, Father God. We pray that you will open up our ears, oh, Lord, and that we pray that you will remove the scales from our eyes because we need more of you, oh, Lord God. We pray that you will empty us of ourselves, oh, God, and fill us us with you. In these times, God, the only thing that holds true in our life is you. So we're calling on you this morning, oh Father God, to have your holy and divine way, oh Lord God. God, we pray that your word will come forth and speak life into every dead situation, oh Lord God. We pray, oh God, that you will speak to every dry situation, oh Father God. Let your word come forth this morning. Let your word come forth. Destroy yokes, oh Lord God. Release the bound, oh Father, in the name of Jesus. For your word said that's where the spirit of the Lord is. There is liberty. So we invite you in this morning into this worship service, into this service, wherever it is being aired, we invite you in, O oh Holy Spirit, to have your holy and divine way. Let your kingdom come here on earth, and we will be so careful to give you the honor, the glory, and the praise. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. my hand this is my heart before you Lord may not understand the way that you take me but Lord I'll go you sang it this is my hand my heart. this is my heart before you Lord may not understand, may not understand the way that you take me but Lord I'll go see this I'm longing for you. Longing for you with the end. Yes. Yielding to you with the end. Yes. Yielding to you with the end. Yes. With my hand raised, yes. is my best friend. Been searching for you with the end. Yes. Searching for you with the end. Yes. And I'm longing for you. Longing for you with the end. Yes. Yielding to you with the end. Yes. Yielding to you with the end. Yes. With my hand raised, yes. is my best friend. This is my hand. This is my heart before you, Lord. May not understand the way that you take me, Lord. I go. You sing it. This is my hand. Heart before you, Lord. Heart before you, Lord. May not understand. I'm longing for you. Longing for you with the yes. I'm yielding to you with the yes. Yielding to you with the yes. With my hands raised, yes, it's my best. 
A birthing cause in the whole world to see There's a yearning in me, a turning in me A birthing cause in the whole world to see You say, a yearning in me, a turning in me A birthing cause in the whole world to see There's a yearning in me, a turning in me A birthing cause in the whole world to see my father and you there's no other I surrender all I'm searching for you searching for you in the end and I'm longing for you longing for you in the end I'm yielding to you with the end yielding to you with the end with my hands raised yes with my best friend I'm searching for you with the end searching for you with the end and I'm longing for you longing for you with the end I'm yielding to you Take it up. Searching for you with the end. Searching for you with the end. And I'm longing for you. Longing for you with the end. I'm building to you with the end. Building to you with the end. With my hands raised, yes, with my best friend. I'm searching for you with the end. Searching for you with the end. And I'm longing for you. Longing for you with the end. I'm building to you with the end.
you have done. Yes, I'm grateful for the victories we won. I could go on and on and on about your words because I'm grateful, grateful, so grateful just to praise you, Lord, flowing from my heart are the issues of my heart is gratefulness. for the things that you have done. Yes, I'm grateful for the victories we won. I could go on and on and on about your words because I'm grateful, grateful, so grateful just to praise you, Lord, flowing from my heart are the issues of my heart is gratefulness.
let you know that the same holds true for us today. Regardless of how gloomy your life looks right now, the sun can shine upon you because all we have to do is call on the name of the Lord and he is our fortress. He is our strength. He is a very present help in a time of trouble. If you just call on him this morning, know him to be your deliverer. Know him to be your shield. Know him to be your buckler. But most of all, know him to be your savior. Now this morning, the ladies come to administer to you Psalms, 18, Psalms 18, I'm sorry, I will call on the name of the Lord.
I'm so glad that you joined us for another broadcast. Just want to say to you that better days are coming. Come on, let's worship God right now. Sometimes it feels cold and you feel all alone. But hold on, better days are coming. It can be rough in this world. I know it ain't easy, but hang on in there. I know better days are coming. And so this morning, I'm just saying to you, my brothers and sisters, those who are listening to me, it might be tough. You may be going through some difficult times and situations, but hold on. Better days are are coming. God has not left you alone. God has not left you by yourself. God has never left the throne. God is on the throne. Jesus is right there pleading your case. And he wants you to know that better days are coming. Look at somebody and tell them, say, better days are coming let's pray Lord I thank you for this day that we've come to preach a word to your people to encourage them that better days are coming and so right now I just want to thank you that you've given me the opportunity to stand here you could have chosen somebody else but thank you that you selected me to be the one that you would use to bring the word to your people. And so now, Lord, move in me. Move on me. Move with you. I I don't want to let you down with this message. Fix it now. Open the minds. Open the ears. Holy listening ears to those who are tuned in that they will understand the message Be blessed and be encouraged. In Jesus' name, amen. Come on, put those hands together. Come on, put those hands together. We just got to thank God that better days are coming. And so this morning, I want to talk with you for a little while about something that will help you navigate these days that we're living in. Let me just say that God is right there by your side. You ought to just reach up. He's right there by your side and better days are coming. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I want to talk to you from the subject this morning, how to make it in the storm. How to make it in the storm. From the book of Acts, the Acts of the Apostles, chapter 27 and verse number 20. Acts 27 and 20. You will find the scripture recorded there. Um, I'll be reading from the New Living Translation of the Holy Scriptures. Acts chapter 27. And verse number 20. 
It says, the terrible storm raged for many days, blotting out the sun and the stars until at last all hope was gone. The terrible storm raged for many days, blotting out the sun and the stars, and until at last all hope was gone. Say this with me, how to make it in the storm. If somebody is there with you, Look at them if you don't mind and just say how to make it in the storm. Come on, let's give God a great hand of praise right where we are now. How to make it in the, in the storm. In Acts chapter 27, not a book that Paul wrote, but a book about the Apostle Paul as the Gentile church is in full swing now. And here they were. Paul had been set up. I preached last Sunday from Acts chapter 16 dealing with the corruption and conversion when Paul went through so much falsely accused as he was, in prison, beaten, and God delivered he and Silas miraculously. And now I'm back this Sunday talking about Paul again. And Paul, on his last missionary journey, managed to get himself arrested, and he appealed his case. He wanted his day in court. But you know, when time came, they set sail for Italy, for Rome. Paul and several other prisoners, and this story takes place when they were in custody of a Roman officer named Julius. Paul had been arrested. I told you he managed to get himself arrested. He was always preaching, always teaching, never backed down. And so this story picks up with him in the custody of the Roman officer named Julius. And so here they were on the coast of the province of Asia. And they were supposed to make several stops along the way. But as they moved and they left the dock and headed out, the weather started getting pretty rough. And so, for several days, they had been sailing slow. And as they moved along, the commanding officer, when they had to pull in because the weather was so bad, found an Egyptian ship for Alexandria, Egypt, that was bound for Italy, and so they got on board. They'd been sailing several days slow, great difficulty because of the weather. They struggled, and they got to a place called Fair Havens. Somebody say Fair Havens. They had lost a lot of time on this journey, and the weather was becoming dangerous for sea travel because it was so late in the fall. Kind of reminds you of Florida and our hurricane season, and Paul spoke to the ship's officers about it. Now, when I picked this story up, Paul told them, he said, I believe there's trouble ahead if we go on. Shipwreck, loss of cargo, and danger that we will all lose our lives as well. But the officer in charge of the prisoners Listen more to the ship's captain and the owner than to Paul. Well, Paul must have made some kind of impression on Julius because 
uh, he didn't transport him in handcuffs. He was allowed privileges to go ahead and come as he pleased. Julius knew that Paul wasn't going to escape. He wanted his day in court, so he was not going anywhere. But when they got to Fair Havens, somebody say Fair Havens. When they got to Fair Havens, Paul told them, don't sell. Wait, the timing isn't right. You see, with God, we have to wait until the timing is right. Sometimes it may look like the time is right, but it isn't right. God moves on a different time than we do. We move on this chronos time so that we can use our clock and we can use our calendar and schedule things and want it to happen on the day and the time that we schedule it. But God moves in what we call the time of kairos, moves in and out of time. That's why Jesus could be seen before he was born because he was operating on the kairos time. That's why Jesus could be seen as the fourth man in that fiery furnace because he moved in and out of time. You know, that's a good thing because Jesus can go in my past, clean it up, come to the future, come to the present, and straighten it up. Go to my future and give me a hookup. So the Lord moves in and out of time because God is not limited. God is not finite. God is infinite. God is uh, immortal. So God is able to move in and out of time whenever God wants to move. I'm glad about that, that he's not limited to your schedule. He's not limited to our schedule. He's not limited to my schedule. He moves in and out of time. So he's not limited to anybody's schedule. But Paul told them the timing isn't right. Sometimes when we want to make a move, we need to consult God first to be sure that the timing is right. Things have to be laid out. God lays things out for you so that when you get to where you're supposed to be, all things are in place. Do you know that God didn't make man until the last when he was creating the earth because the earth wasn't ready for human life until God got it ready. So he got everything ready and then human life. God in your lifetime, maybe it's not going too slow. Maybe God is just getting things ready for you and you're going through this storm and you think that things are being too hard right now. Hang on in there because God is preparing you for something better than what you have right now. And if you get there too soon, all of your supplies are not there. We can learn a good thing from the military when they send soldiers in, they try to have all of the supplies, all of the things ready for them. So when they get there, they are ready to go and ready to move. And whatever storm you're in right now, you just need to buckle down and hang on in there because God is getting something ready for you. You may not see your rainbow today, but my brother, my sister, you hang on in there. God is getting something ready for you greater than what you've ever had before. Look at somebody and say, how to make it in the storm. So Paul said, don't sell. Why? Why? Hurt and damage for us if we sell right now. The ship will be lost if we sell right now. Lives are in danger if we sell right now. In life, there are three kinds of storms. There are storms you cause. There are storms God allows. And there are storms others cause. Sometimes we bring things upon ourselves by the way we live, by the way we uh, speak. We speak things into existence that don't need to be spoken into existence by the way we treat other folk. And handle things. So sometimes we cause our own storm. And even by our sin. 
Sometimes we cause our own storm, whether you agree with that or not. And storms that God allows. Sometimes God will allow us to have problems just to grow us so that we can become stronger along the way. And God gives us the opportunity to grow through this storm process. And God set, sets us up to grow through this storm process. But storms you cause, some of what you're dealing with is not because somebody did something to you. Not all the time is it because we're suffering for the Lord. Sometimes we're just reaping that seed that we have sown. Then the storms God allows. Sometimes you can become too satisfied and get lazy along the way and hung up on stuff. This is my stuff. These are my things. And so God will allow something to come in to stir you up, to move you, to get you to going in the right direction so that you stop your own autonomy, taking your own ownership of the things that really belong to God that God let you use and not those things which belong to you. But then there are storms others cause. Now, you don't have to really worry about that because, I'm going to tell you why. Isaiah said no weapon, 54 and 17 of Isaiah, no weapon formed against you will prosper. So when others cause storms, you don't have to worry about it so much because God is right there and God will move it like it needs to be moved and God will protect you in the storm. But in the King James Version, uh, verse 11 begins with a transitional phrase, nevertheless. In spite of all, Paul kept pleading, but Julius believed the master of the ship and the owner more than Paul. Three common reasons people sail in the storms. Let me just share those with you. Number one. Bad advice from people who are supposed to know. Nevertheless, the New International says, but the New Living Translation rather says, but the officer in charge of the prisoners listened more to the ship's captain and the owner than to Paul. There's still this phrase, this transitional phrase going on. So God's leading versus man's knowledge. And let me break this down. In the natural, God had spoken to Paul to, for Paul to be able to know what was going on in the supernatural. God speaks to Paul. It may look good. The winds had died down. It looked good. It looked like it was okay to sail. But Paul was saying to them, you only see as far as the human eye can see. You, don't, you can't look beyond your human vision. You have to have these supernatural eyes, this supernatural in your spirit to look beyond what the human sight can see and into the realm where God is moving. Paul told them, even though it looks good, it's not good. Be careful when things might look good in the storm. Sometimes in the eye of the storm, it's just quiet before it hits. We know that living in Florida, dealing with hurricanes, when it gets quiet, that's one of the most dangerous times because we know what's coming next. Look at somebody and tell them, say, we know what's coming next. And so it looks good to us, but we need to consult God. They were saying that Fair Havens is not a good place to anchor down for the winter. We, we don't have the right lodging. We don't have a whole lot of things. But Paul was saying to them, don't sail right now. It looks good to us, but we need to consult God. Looks are on the outward. Look beneath the surface where only the spirit can go beneath the surface. Only 
the Lord knew where the winds were. Only God could name each wind. Only our Savior knew because I remember a time when Jesus in Mark chapter 4 verses 35 through 41 when Jesus was on board a ship and he had to make the wind hush and the waves lie down. But Jesus knows the name of every wind, of every storm, of every wave, of every movement in nature. And Jesus not only knows the name, but Jesus knows where they are, where they're going to be next, what they're going to do next. The captain only knew what was humanly possible to know about the sea. And granted, this captain may have been a great seafaring man, but he could not look into the supernatural. If you're going to make it through the storm, you've got to have a supernatural look. And only Jesus can give you that supernatural look that he's able to take you beyond what you can see and deal with that which you don't see. And you know what? Something else about this. The second thing, the first one was bad advice. But the second thing is the majority is not always right. The majority is not always right. The crowd may not always be right. The greater part, the most advised, listen at verse 12. And since Fair Havens was an exposed harbor, a poor place to spend the winter, most of the crew, somebody say most of the crew. I'm reading from the New Living Translation. Most of the crew wanted to go on to Phoenix, farther up the coast of Crete, and spend the winter there. Phoenix was a good harbor with only a southwest and northwest exposure. Now, I want you to follow me closely because uh, the crowd said, and they advised, that we ought to go on a little bit further. But Paul has gotten this unction from the Lord. The Lord has told him, say, Fair havens might not look the best, but it is the best. Sometimes in life, what you think looks the best ain't always the best. Look at somebody and tell them, sometimes in life, what looks the best ain't always the best. Because we're looking from the human perspective, but in the spirit, God had spoken to Paul and told Paul, you all stay right there. Don't go anywhere. Stay right there. The majority isn't always right. The Lord was speaking through Paul to let them know there's danger up ahead. And if you move from here, I don't care what the captain of the ship said. Because he's captain of the ship, he's not captain of the sea. Because the sea belongs to the Lord. The earth is the Lord. The fullness thereof and those that dwell therein. The cattle on a thousand hills belongs to the Lord. It all belongs to the Lord. The, the, the ship might have been in the sea, but the Lord owned the sea that the ship was in. Somebody give God a hand of praise. How to make it in the storm. The third thing. Basing decisions on circumstances isn't always good. And when the south wind, in verse 13, when a light wind blowing from the south, the sailors thought they could make it. Satan, who is our enemy, will always be there to trick you. When especially it looks good for you to sail your ship, the wind will die down. Remember now, he is the prince of the air. And the wind will die down. The waters will lie down. And you think it's okay to go to the next place. And boy, when you get started and you get out in the middle of your journey, there the winds come. There the turbulence started. And you couldn't see it because where you started from, the winds were Slow and fair. Verse 13 said it was a light wind from the south. And the sailors, because all they could see was what they could see. The sailors thought they could make it. So here's what they did. They pulled up anchors. 
because this happened, I'll do that. That's what I'm talking about, basing decisions on circumstances. Because this happened, I'm going to do that. Because that happened, I'm going to do thus and so. And we've got to be careful when we base decisions on that kind of logic. In this case, because the wind was soft and the wind was light, it's okay to say, y'all. But they couldn't see. <laughs> kind of sounds redundant. They couldn't S-E-E what was on the S-E-A. They didn't know what was on the sea, but they knew what they saw with their human eyes. There was, uh, King James calls this wind Euroclidon, meaning furious, raising many waves. And verse 14 said, after they had pulled up the anchors, they got the anchors up. The ship, it had to be a big ship because later you hear next week uh, from another message about this, but there were four anchors. And for them to have four anchors, it had to be a mighty large ship. They pulled them up and they started. But the weather changed abruptly and a wind of typhoon strength. It came, burst across the island and Blew them out to sea and the sailors couldn't even turn the ship away. They just had to let the ship ride in the wind. And Paul kept telling them, stay here, don't leave. Because it's not safe out there on the sea. God is speaking to somebody right now. You may be considering making some kind of a move, but God is speaking to somebody right now and saying to you, you need to get some consultation from the Holy Spirit because if you don't, you're a Clyden, that strong wind in the spirit, that demonic wind may be waiting just to destroy you. Sometimes Satan tries to get you away from your base so he can destroy you, so he can take you out. But you've got to learn how to make it in the storm. And make it in the storm means you're going to trust God and trust God's directions over what you know. There are three typical mistakes people make in the storms. Verse 15 says they drift. The ship started drifting. It was caught up in the wind. The sailors couldn't do anything about it. Paul had told them earlier, stay right here, don't go anywhere. But they had to listen to the captain. Now, the captain and the owner, the captain was probably saying to Paul, you, you keep on preaching, let me handle this ship. I'm the captain of the ship, I know the sea. You keep on preaching and I'll keep on being the sea captain. I won't preach if you don't try to be the captain of the ship. It had nothing to do with the captain's ability. It had nothing to do with where he went to captain school or where he went to uh, 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 get his credentials. Paul was saying, I got a captain that's greater than you. And the old ship of Zion is going to land and it's already landed many thousands. Paul is saying to him, I know a captain that owns the sea. I know a captain that created the sea. I know a captain that knows every corner, every crook, every crevice where anything goes on this sea. You don't know. You can't map out. You can't navigate. And if he had a GPS, he couldn't have a GPS that knew more than Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. And now they're drifting. You see, when we get out of the will of God, when we get away from the Lord, we run the danger of drifting and being caught up in the wind. The ship got caught up in a wind, but listen to this. They didn't have to get caught up in the wind. If they'd stayed where they were, they would not have gotten caught up in the wind. Then, then, after the ship got caught up in the wind, uh, verses 18 and 19 talks about what happened. The sailors were afraid. Everybody got all afraid, but in verse 18 it says, the next day, Gale force winds. Now this was one day, and the next day they're still in this storm. Gale force winds continued to batter the ship. And this is 
Three typical mistakes made in a storm. One, drifting. The second is we discard. So now that the ship, they think that uh, throwing things off the ship will make it easier for them to navigate the ship. So now they start discarding things. They took some of the ship's gear. They threw it overboard. They started getting rid of things now. They were throwing things off. And when we get into trouble in our storms, instead of going back to the Lord, we start discarding things. We start throwing things off. Well, I, I, I guess I need to get rid of this and need to get rid of that. No, you need to go back to the Lord so that the Lord can take you to the proper place and guide you in the proper direction. And so they started throwing off the gear. The storm was raging. But the third mistake we make in the storm is we despair. Verse number 20 says that, the terrible storm raged for many days, blotting out the sun and the stars until all hope was gone. We despair. These things had gone. It had gone away. They couldn't see the sun. They couldn't see the stars. They couldn't see the moon at night. And they needed that to navigate to even know where they were until all hope was gone. Are you listening to me? How to make it in the storm. But here's something. Let me tell you how to make it in the storm as I close and get out of here. Verse 23, you need God's presence. Somebody say God's presence. For uh, last night, it says an angel of the Lord to whom I belong stood and, and stood by my side. This is Paul talking, said, don't be afraid, Paul, for you will surely stand before Caesar. And what's more, God in his goodness has granted you safety to everyone sailing with you. In the midst of all of this, the storm going on, Paul still has the promise of God. And God says, even though the captain was hard-headed, even though the captain was contrary, and didn't listen to what I told you tell him. Even though all of this happened because of you, Paul. Are you listening to me? Somebody's deliverance is riding on you. He said, because of you, Paul. Listen at verse 23. For the last night an angel of, of the God to whom I belong and whom I stir, serve stood beside me. He said, don't be afraid, Paul. For you will surely... Stand trial before Caesar. What's more, God in his goodness has granted safety to everyone sailing with you. Because of Paul, all these folk on board ship would be saved. That's God's presence, but that's also God's purpose. God is saying to Paul, don't worry, I've got you covered. In the midst of a, a storm, Whatever storm you're going through, you need God's presence. But not only do you need God's presence, you need God's purpose. God is saying, because of you, I will deliver somebody else. You've got to stay with the Lord. God is saying to you, not only do you need God's presence, not only do you need God's purpose, but you need God's promise. In verse 25, as I get ready to close, Paul said, so take courage, for I believe God. It will be just as he said, but we will be shipwrecked on an island. Well, how to make it in the storm? God works in mysterious ways, wonders to perform. He plants his footsteps out on the sea and rides in every storm. To make it in the storm, you got to stay with the Lord. And when the Lord gave directions at Fair Haven, they should have stayed right there. But God, in his love and God, in his compassion, still reached out. He said, Paul, because of you, I'll save the rest of them. Are y'all listening to me this morning? The Lord may be saying to you right now, 
because of you who stayed in fair havens, because of you with that fair haven spirit, because of you, even though you were forced in this position, even though you had to go along with it and you didn't believe in it. Paul told the captain, don't sail, but the captain sailed anyway. But because of Paul and because God loved Paul and because Paul was God's messenger, he said to Paul, you stayed with me. You told them the right thing. You couldn't make them do anything, but I'm going to save them. I'm going to deliver them from this catastrophe because of you. Jesus is saying to us right now, it didn't look good on Calvary, but he's saying, I died for you. I went through all of that for you, just for you. I died for you. I hung on that cross for you. I got up three days later just for you. And the way you make it in the storm is you stay with the Lord. I'm done. How to make it in the storm. Next week, I'm going to be talking about four anchors in the storm. But for those of you who are in storms and you chose to leave fair havens, the Lord is saying, I will let you come back. Isn't it good that God still honored Paul even though the captain didn't do what Paul had asked him even though the corrections officer Julius didn't do what Paul told them God gave them a message for God said Paul because you did what I told you to do I'm going to deliver you I'm going to keep you safe and I'm going to deliver them cause of you my brother my sister if you know Christ and you straight away you need to come back somebody's deliverance may be riding on you come back to the Lord let me just pray for you right now say this with me Lord I strayed away but I'm coming back to you I repent and right now Lord give me another chance and so, Lord, I want to come back home. Come on back to Jesus. Oh, I see somebody. I see somebody in my spirit coming back to the Lord right now. I want you to put those hands together for all of those who are listening to us today. Somebody is coming back to the Lord right now. But I'm also concerned about those who don't know Jesus as Savior. And so will you pray this prayer with me? Dear Lord, I know I'm a sinner. I know I need a Savior. Jesus, forgive me. I believe that you were, that you died and you were resurrected with all power in your hands. So Jesus, I know you've got the power to save me. Will you come into my life right now? I receive you into my life as my Lord and Savior. In Jesus' name, amen. If you prayed that prayer, you're saved. Get into a Bible-believing church where you can be taught the Word of God. Hit me up at newlife.daytona at gmail.com. Telephone number here, 386-677-6222. I would love to hear from you about your salvific experience. And if I can help in any kind of way. And hit me up if you want to belong to the global new life. We're still in the evangelistic and recruiting business for the Lord. So if you 
of being led to this congregation. We can still, I can still take you in. Hit me up, newlife.daytona.gmail.com and 386-677-6222. Remember, something good is going to happen to you today because Jesus of Nazareth is passing your way. I love you. Remember how to make it in the storm. Later.